Hi everyone, it's Roberta. I was just going to have a little bit of a play with some coffee. This is just some regular brewed dark coffee. And then this is some extra coffee. You can see how, how thick it is. I actually put this in a pot and boiled it down so it will be a little bit thicker for the purpose of being uh, a darker coffee to work with. And uh, I'm just going to play around a little bit with it. I like to mix my um, coffee with some food coloring. I often use um, reinkers as well and have even mixed it with paint, uh, acrylic paint. But I like it. The best that I've done it with is just playing around with the food coloring. And I have the regular, although I don't have the regular blue. I used that when I was trying to dye something. Didn't work. <laughs> and then I have the neon colors, which I really like these the best. And um, these are some silicone ice cube trays I got at Meyer when I worked there um, last year. And... Um, I have actually cut some of these apart and I use them as molds. I take up some old used paper towel. I hand shred it. You could put it through a paper shredder I guess. Um, the one I had had paint and ink in it so I didn't put it through a shredder. I just shredded it by hand. And then I um, mixed it with some water and some just regular Elmer's glue, school glue. and uh, just mixed it up really good and then I pressed it into the the form I made a little piggy and the little piggy that I made I actually sent to uh, Shell C um, in a Happy Mail package I painted it up pink with some little black spots um, but I'm going to use this today to put some of my coffee in and then to put a couple of drops. So I'm going to use this as a palette. And uh, I also have the Scotty Dog. This one has one less. This only has five. The Little Piggy has six. Um, but I'm going to use it just to get different colors of coffee paint to play around with. Okay, I'm back. I found a pipette. I have a bunch more. But uh, I've moved in the last... Uh, six months and then I've moved my craft stuff from the living room to the bedroom. <clears throat> I have no idea where I put I had a bag of a hundred of these somebody gave me in a uh, Wednesday Wishes. And uh, anyway, so I'm going to get some coffee. I have to be careful so I don't spill on the uh, the rug. I'm, I live in an apartment so I don't want to get in trouble. And I really don't need that much in each of these. And I actually uh, save the coffee paint for about three days. And then after that it kind of goes off. It start molding. So if you're going to do the coffee painting, you can save your coffee paint so it doesn't get wasted. Um, and keep painting with it for a couple of days and then when you're done you could put it in your uh, paper towels and make some really pretty paper towels for or even your baby wipes if you're into using the baby wipes and um, one more I don't know how many colors I'm going to use um, this is a piece of Canson XL watercolor paper, 9 by 12 inches. It's a 140 pound cold press. I really like this. It's just one I get at uh, Walmart for about five, six dollars. And I don't have a preference to what side I use. It's just whatever sides up. And uh, I'm gonna put a little dollop of the. Uh, food coloring let me move 
this back out of the way. Now the coffee gives it a, um, a brown hue, but it also makes it smell really nice. And I'd really like to put much less in there. I don't need a whole drop, I don't believe. So I'm trying to put less in right now. And I don't know who thinks these are like the easiest things to work with or not. <laughs> I really don't much care for the packaging. To me, I think it's um, too much. Packages are too tight. And you can't really control how much comes out. And on one of these, I'm going to do two of the blue. I want to add some pink and blue to make a purple. I think I need a bit more of the uh, pink for that. I think I got that one already. Just mix it up a little bit. Kind of see what colors we're getting. That's a nice dark purple. Let me get a sample of paper so you can see. I'm going to rinse this off in my water cup. I'm going to add some of this thicker coffee into these. I'm going to mix this one up, see what color we've got here. It's a pretty pinkish color with that brown hue to it from the coffee. Well, this one it had the smallest little drop, so there probably won't be too much color with this one. There we go. Nice grassy color. I could put more green in another one if I wanted a darker green color. And this blue, it's like a turquoise. Alrighty. Okay, I'm happy with those colors. What I want to do is kind of number which one they are. Um, this one is where the snout is. That one's inside the belly. This one is the rear leg. <laughs> this is by the tail and this is by the back. Okay, now this one, we just have three. Yellow, 
think I actually want to make another one so I make like an orange color. And I don't know that I'm going to use all these, but the thing with making them ahead of time is I can always use them for other projects. The colors I don't use tonight, I can certainly use at another time. Green. And then I want one with just red. I think I may have mixed that up without even remembering what I was doing. A couple in there. When I lived uh, in my other apartment, um, I was able to do this with a linoleum floor, so I didn't have to be as careful. I wasn't as nervous trying to uh, use it. <laughs> Ever doing it over a carpet that's not yours kind of makes you a little nervous. Okay, that one is a bright orangish color bordering on brown. I believe that's the same. This one's more yellow. That yellow is a uh, strong color. And this one is the red. And then the darker green. <clears throat> I think I want to add some more of the uh, darker coffee into these colors. There we go. Alrighty. This one, rear leg. face, tail, and the back. Alrighty. So that's my palette. I'm going to uh, my stamp pad out. I want to do a flower on this one. It's this stamp. It's from Stampendous. And it is called the Q130 Fresh Bloom. It's just a really nice big flower stamp. And I'm going to emboss it with some white pearls for the border so that when I do the painting it'll stay within the little areas. If you guys have a Versamark that's drying out you can go to the local Walmart or grocery store or drug store get some glycerin. It's about four dollars a bottle and when you get this you just put it in your, use a, uh, a pipette eyedropper and just lay it in lines and then wait for it to soak in. And that's what it that is basically. And glycerin is not oily. It's a pure natural vegetable based oil. And uh, it is not oily. Like when you put it on your card you don't see oil residue on the back. And um, some people would think, oh, well, you wouldn't do that for your Versamark, but that's actually how you could replenish it without spending a lot of money. 
<clears throat> spend four dollars on the bottle once you're pretty much set for life because you really don't use too much of it and uh, I'm actually going to do a couple of flowers I'm going to offset this one and then do the rest of them off the edges of the paper and it's hard to see where this is on here but if you kind of put it in the light you can see and I'm not worried about the glycerin or whatever getting on there and I want to turn it so I don't have the exact same leaves everywhere I'm just going to put a little bit more right on that one. There we go. Let's be here out of the way. I don't need those right now. I do need a sheet of paper for the embossing powder. Yeah, I love embossing things. I think it looks so pretty, but it's really nice when you're doing some watercoloring or in this instance some coffee painting because it creates little channels for the ink, for the paint to stay in. And there, I don't know if you can see it. My camera is attached to the shop light that's right above this area and uh, it makes it very tight <laughs> to do very much of anything. Okay, I'm going to get the heat gun and get this going. Let it heat up for a little bit first, make sure it's hot. Less warping on the paper. And make sure to keep moving it so I don't burn the paper or warp it too much. And embossing powder is just basically some finely ground up bits of plastic so when it gets heated it melts the plastic and that's your embossing and you can see it's starting to go done. Now I just need to get paintbrush. Let's see if 
if I can find the one that I use all the time. You would think that I'd have this planned out and ready, but I didn't get the paintbrush out. I pretty much got everything else ready. Okay. Have my palettes right close. And right here is my little thing to let me know where all the colors are. So make sure I get the right colors. I want to put some yellow in the little uh, middle area of this. And yellow is on the tail of the Scotty. A bunch of little teeny tiny dots that are the center of the flower. <clears throat> and the more it gets uh, saturated, the darker the color will end up being in that area. And sometimes I go over them a couple of times. A lot of people have the um, a stamp to put a coffee mug um, stain on their their card or their artwork and I actually just go ahead and put the um, paint or the coffee directly onto the bottom of my mug and set it down and that's how I generally just get the uh, coffee stain on uh, my cards and ATCs I use the original and if you get the card or ATC I make within a couple of weeks of it being made, you can still smell the uh, coffee in it. They smell really good. <laughs> That's one of the perks of doing coffee painting is that you get to smell the coffee. You get to enjoy it. I want to paint each of these little flowers a different color. I don't want to make them all the same, although the, uh, the little stamens, I'm going to make them the uh, bright yellow. I'm not sure what kind of flower this is. I'm not, you know, knowledgeable about flowers. I know tulips and orchids and hibiscus and irises because those are my favorite flowers but as for the rest of them I don't know what they are I'd have to see what they were labeled in order to know but I love this stamp it's nice and big and a lot of fun to paint This has a lot of the little things to uh, color in on each of the flowers. I'm in Kentucky, northern Kentucky, in a city named Florence. I don't know if it was named after Florence Nightingale or Florence, Italy, but um, it's 
we got some snow on the ground. We got a little bit of snow the other night, but it's starting to warm up. It was like 50 degrees today, which was nice and warm, but the air was still a little bit cold. And for some reason, this pedal here in the corner got a little bit of stuff on it, so I'm going to check the stamp. I must have got some of the, the glycerin in there. That's fine. Okay, now I'm going to color the center one. Um, I'm going to go around this area and color it a little bit orange. And orange is on this one. And it's the rear leg. This is the tail. This is the rear leg. So this one would be the orange. I just want to do little bits in the center area. And try to be careful so I don't go over where the... Um, the yellow is. If they blend a little, I don't have a problem, but I don't want it all to blend. Just want the center of the flower to be a bit darker. And then I want to use, um, I believe it's this color here, this peach color. And I want to do this for the center. If I get too close to the orange right now, the colors will bleed more than I want them to, so I'm just going to color around it first and then go in. And I'm just going to paint one layer now and then if I want it darker I can go in a little bit later and add another coating or another layer of it to make it darker. If I do it right now, it'll oversaturate the paper. And watercolor paper can hold water, but if it gets too much, then it starts kind of balling up, filling up a little bit, which is not very pretty. It ruins all your hard work kind of did that when I was first learning, which I still am. I really don't know that much about it. Anything I've learned is just trial and error, just watching stuff on YouTube. When I first started, I'd watch a lot of uh, Lindsay Wyrick, the frugal crafter. I just really love her. She's very vivacious and knowledgeable. She's a wonderful artist. I love her style. And uh, just watching her actually encouraged me to even just try. I have a sister who is an artist. Uh, she does some amazing work. And uh, be very intimidating trying to uh, do my own art. And then, not that I actually compare it against hers, but you know, I do see her work and look at mine, and it's different quality, obviously. And uh, I'm new at this, I've just only been doing this for maybe the, the last two years or so now. And uh, she's been doing it for, goodness, probably 40 years. 
my forte was um, computers. I uh, was living in California, single mother of three, and uh, was actually on welfare at the time. Couldn't work because uh, my two daughters had uh, pretty bad asthma. And uh, my youngest was always in the hospital, or we were at the ER or a specialist or something because her asthma was just really bad. <clears throat> so I just was unable to work just because if I had a job I would just constantly have to call off or leave work to pick her up and take her to the hospital or the emergency room or a specialist. So I just basically stayed home and took care of her. But um, I was filling out a bunch of uh, entries for sweepstakes and uh, the way I got into computers was there was a brand new computer store um, it was called BizWrite or something like that I, I can't remember but uh, it was brand new in our area and to drum up business and get people to come in it was going to give away a brand new computer system to a grand prize winner they were also going to give away a printer and games and a lot of other different things to other winners and I went in there and filled out the entry forms and went home and prayed God, you know, I hate being on welfare, and I want to learn about computers, and I don't have the ability to get one, because any time I put a, a loan into the bank to uh, see if I could get approved for a loan, they would deny it. So I had no way to get a computer. And so I ended up getting a call saying, Congratulations, you're the grand prize winner. And I was just really... <laughs> surprise but I did win and uh, it was an IB 